as a policy success. Uh, they see it as something that differentiates them from the American experience. Um, when there is uh, a mass casualty event in the U.S., there is often a flurry of commentary in Australia about we're glad we don't have these types uh, of events because of our policy settings. And John Howard as a politician can be a polarizing figure uh, in Australia, but even his political opponents, people who uh, view him negatively on other aspects of his legacy, view uh, the, the Port Arthur response as something that uh, uh, they, they commend him for. And so you'll have people say, uh, John Howard, he's terrible, but what he did with after Port Arthur, that was amazing. You know, that type of, of narrative and respect, even from those who would traditionally be uh, his uh, political opponents. Thank you so much for that uh, very informative uh, presentation, uh, Dr. Nagin. Um, what we're going to do now, after you've had an opportunity to have a, a sip of water, is uh, move to um, our invited participants today and, and allow people to have an opportunity to ask you some questions about your presentation and paper. And how we'll uh, proceed is each uh, participant will have uh, five minutes to ask you uh, some follow-up questions, and then we'll move on uh, to the uh, commissioners. So I'm, I'm going to start uh, uh, with Mr. Uh, Rod Giltaka, who is in um, joining us from Vancouver today. And uh, Mr. Giltaka, you have five minutes. Thank you very much. Um, it's five minutes is not a lot of time uh, to to discuss and uh, and vet this report. The report's lengthy and a lot of the data has been circulating around uh, a lot of these communities for a long time. Um, many papers have been published on this material uh, that are highly critical of it, um, but there's just not enough time to get into that here because five minutes is just, yeah, it's not even close. But anyway, um, I think the question that I would like to pose to Dr. Negan has to do with um, how this applies, how all of his research applies to what happened in Nova Scotia. So just to be clear about all that stuff, we've, we've had a real problem in this commission with parties coming in and using, standing on top of what happened to promote and to push their agendas uh, for changing Canada for whatever, whatever their agenda is. And it's been a very difficult thing that uh, I think the public largely rejects. Um, but to be clear about what happened, so to set the, set the stage for my question is, we had in Nova Scotia on April 18th and 19th, 2020, we had an individual with a decade or decades long history of bizarre and violent behavior. It's my understanding he even threatened the life of his parents. Um, He's had several interactions with law enforcement throughout that entire period. So he was not flying under the radar. He was well known for these things. Didn't have a firearms license. Didn't have any connection with the lawful firearms community. He smuggled firearms across the border from the United States. He dressed up as a police officer driving a police car and committed the largest spree shooting in Canadian history. So my question is, is being that the commission has been has spent millions upon millions of dollars to find out what happened in this circumstance what in this report what measures were implemented in australia with the national firearms agreement would have prevented or mitigated this uh this shooting spree process uh, th thank you mr kotaka for the question so first of all i just want to be clear our our brief was to uh, write a report for the Commission uh, on the Australian experience. Uh, in terms of the relevance of the Australian experience for Nova Scotia specifically or for Canada more broadly, uh, that was not what we were asked to do. The, the decision on, on relevance of our work or any of the other work presumably uh, on the Canadian policy future uh, is ultimately up to Canadians and to the Commission. Um, we hope that what we present informs uh, and, and shines a light on some aspects, but uh, I, we were not asked to look at it specifically 
in the context of uh, the events in Nova Scotia in 2020. So um, I, I take your point that the, the individual in question had a history um, and uh, uh, conducted uh, the, the mass casualty uh, event. In terms of what we think uh, the Australian experience could, could do specifically for that individual to have prevented that, that's not something we were asked to look at. But are there lessons in terms of uh, firearm um, registration, uh, licensing, uh, engagement with mental health services, um, working with general practitioners or, or family doctors uh, to ask questions about mental health and whether people have firearms, uh, sharing of data across jurisdictions? I mean, those are parts of the National Firearm uh, Agreement. Um, and whether those are policy components that would be of relevance to Nova Scotia and Canada is ultimately a matter for the commission. So, so it, it really, there's nothing in that report that would have mitigated or prevented what happened in Nova Scotia. Does that I'm, sound, I'm does not, that I'm not sound a, accurate? I'm, in position, I'm not in a position to answer that question. I really, I don't know enough of the details. I haven't been involved in the commission's work. So that's a question for, for the commission ultimately that's not something i i can say one way or the other so in fact the, the the report itself just contributes to a conversation it creates a a response to the opportunity uh presented by this the worst spree shooting in canadian history to talk about gun control that's and, that's sounds like that's what's going on and and uh mr Giltaka, that I'll, I'll, uh, dr degan will respond and then we'll move on to the to mr zach sure I, I can't comment. You're, you're asking me to, to comment on um, motives of other people, um, and that's not mm -hmm. something I'm in a position to do. I wasn't, uh, yeah, I wasn't involved in that. Okay, thank you. And this was a commissioned report, so we the the commission paid for this. Is that correct? Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Gilpacker. We'll we'll move on to to Mr. Zach now. Uh, you will